Today, we're joined by Alex, who's making machine learning easy to use for everyone. And of course, he's using TensorFlow.js to do just that. First of all, Alex, tell us more about your background and who you are. Uh, sure, Jason, thanks for having me. Um, well, I'm a senior systems architect uh, based in Australia. Um, I've worked in R&D and systems architecture for about 18 years now. Um, but my journey with ML uh, just started over a year ago, so I am by no means an expert in ML. Uh, I will say that I was actually a bit terrified uh, at the beginning because I didn't really know much about it. It can be very um, daunting at the beginning. But <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. So uh, I started working with TensorFlow.js because uh, we wanted to add machine learning support uh, to the web platform um, that we are working with. And TensorFlow just gave us everything we were looking for. Awesome. That's great to hear. And what exactly did you create? Um, well, we created a platform called Kimu. So uh, Kimu is a visual workflow engine that allows you to build very complex solutions in just minutes. Um, and we do that through a drag and drop interface, um, which helps you uh, define any kind of process without the need for coding. Um, and by that, I mean, you can do things, you know, as simple as, you know, orchestrating classic event-based uh, workflows. So for example, you have a system A uh, that generates an event and you use Kimo to you know, call an API and trigger some other process in system B. And, and also we can do more complex implementations, you know, including machine vision, machine learning uh, through TensorFlow.js. Um, so we basically wanted to build a product for you know, prototyping automation and uh, orchestration of, of different resources that anyone could use, not, not only developers. And that sounds pretty cool. Uh, I really want to see if it's an action. Do you, do you have a demo for us today? Sure. Um, so in this first example, uh, this is actually one of my favorites because it combines uh, hardware and software. So what um, we are basically doing is using an image classifier to control an IoT device. Uh, and this is something our users can build in less than five minutes. Um, so the way how it works, uh, we have these applications we call things, and one of them is a webcam, which uh, captures the live feed from your webcam. And we send that to an image classifier, uh, which contains the, the ML model. Um, so if we go inside of the webcam thing, uh, here is where we can fine tune the logic. Uh, in this case, we're not really doing much, but uh, we're basically just sending every single frame coming out of the webcam uh, into our model. But here you could, for example, apply you know, image filters if you needed to before we, 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 we pass that to the model. Um, the training is, is super simple. Uh, we basically uh, just define the classes we want. In this case, uh, we want three classes, one for me you know, uh, 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 making the post to turn the light on, one for the light off, and one just for me doing nothing. And you just have to click on one button to capture the current frame and add that frame uh, to, the, to, the, to the class. So we're basically training the model on the spot. Um, and of course, you can you know, later uh, check which images are part of the class or remove them or add more. Um, so after this is done, the next time the model sees an image, it will try to guess to which of those classes that image belongs to, and it will generate an event. And with that, we can trigger other things. So um, here we are just, uh, once the event is generated, we're just waiting a little bit to make sure that class is recognized uh, multiple times. I'm just making sure I, I keep that pose for, for a couple of seconds. And then we, we, we just send a message to our IoT uh, platform. Um, yeah, so one of the advantages of Kimu is that you can create your own widgets, right? So here, for example, widgets, by the way, are those little tiles you see here that we are using to define our logic with. Um, and, and you can, of course, use JavaScript code as well if you wanted to. So in our case, we are just uh, doing, you know, using a WebSocket connection to instruct our light to turn on and off. Very cool. I like that a lot. And I love how easy it is to kind of then you know, interact with hardware devices, like maybe a Raspberry Pi or something like this, right? So exactly. you know, just WebSockets are pretty simple with something like socket.io or something like that. And you can just send data very, very fast, bi-directional. And yeah, that's really cool. I love it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And what, I've said this a bit before on the show as well to other people uh, who have made some hardware. I always love to see people creating more stuff with JavaScript and hardware. People forget they can do that just by mm. streaming the data over and then classifying things and then sending some commands back and all that kind of thing. So very excited to see what your users get up to with that later on, definitely. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. Cool. And uh, what else have you got for us? 
Um, well, in this example, um, this one is very interesting because um, here we combine two very different machine learning models that were trained in two completely different tasks, and we put them together to also you know, achieve something completely different. So in this case, we are controlling a video game with my eyes. And, and here I'm, I'm, I'm raising my hands just, just to, to show you that I'm not really controlling the car in any way uh, using the keyboard. Um, but um, if we go inside of the webcam, you can see uh, uh, the logic. So it goes uh, left to right, top to bottom. And what we are doing here is basically we first, uh, as before, we captured uh, the, the feed from the webcam and um, we pass that to the, to the face tracking section, which, is, uh, which are those blue widgets you see here. Um, uh, we are running a media pipe face detection model. So the idea is to extract my face and, and, and some of the features from my face. In this case, we are trying to cut out the area around my, my right eye. And what we do then is just pass that image to a, a custom machine learning model that we actually trained with Kimo using TensorFlow.js uh, to predict the direction in which my eye is looking. Right, just, just as a side note, I think uh, the new version of, of this MediaPipe model already comes with iris detection. So potentially we can skip this uh, stage one, one, once uh, we upgrade our, our version of, of the model. As you've got a question for you at this point. So I, 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 I like um, uh, this node flow once again, very nice and easy to use. Um, if, if you've got some uh, arbitrary model, maybe somewhere on some website somewhere that's built in TensorFlow.js, like the one that you've trained here, can you pull that in very easily for if, if other people got models they want to use into your system? Not at the moment, but okay. that is yeah. part of our roadmap, definitely. Um, yeah, that'd be very useful if I've got like a custom model I want to then attach to that output there or something that could be very nice to use. So. Absolutely. At the beginning, we we were trying to build the platform so that people could train and build the models within the platform, but realized we realized that most of our users would actually want to use models already built for them. Sure. So yeah. we're actually trying to implement that at the moment. Nice. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. So just to finalize with this, uh, what are we doing after after? You know, my, my the, the custom model uh, uh, evaluates my eye and predicts the direction in which we are looking. It, it gives us a value from zero to one hundred, and, and you can see here that if I look towards the right, the, the value increases to close to one hundred. If I'm looking towards the left, the value goes close to zero. And uh, we're gonna use this to control the steering of the car, right? But because our three D game uh, only understands values from minus one to positive one, minus that one being you know turning the steering wheel to the left, positive one to the right, uh, we use another widget that maps that output from zero to one hundred into into the range that that we need, and that's pretty much it. You know the the, the logic actually looks more complex than it really is, uh, but most of some of those widgets there are just you know to give us a preview of the different stages of of the process. Really cool. I love it. And um, you know, this could be very interesting for even playing computer games. Maybe if you are unable to move other body parts, if you're um, you know unable to do so, it gives mm -hmm. people a chance to actually play games and do other things as well uh, in, in, exactly. in this kind of action. So that's really awesome to see. Great. Right, yeah. um, I think you've got some other demos for us as well, maybe. <laughs> Uh, yes, we have a final one. Um, just to give you a quick background about this one. So uh, this one is a prototype we put together uh, for one of our users, which uh, runs a restaurant. And they wanted to see if they could use machine vision to track uh, the quantity left uh, of food in different uh, food containers. Um, so this is just a prototype uh, that measures the amount of liquid in that orange container. Uh, you see that in the video. Um, and, and this was a very deliberate setup because in the case of our customer, they wanted to use existing security cameras already in place. Uh, and in such scenarios, uh, your target container wouldn't necessarily be you know, centered and in focused. So that's why we, we created this video in this way. So uh, this is the final, video, uh, the final version of, 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 of the program. Um, the video is a bit sped up, so things happen fast, but you can see that as water is taken out from the container, the graph reflects the changes of, uh, in the level of the liquid, liquid which, is, which is what we wanted. Um, we built this demo probably in 20 minutes, and, and it, it has a few stages. So uh, what we are doing here is we first crop the video to focus on the area that, that we are really interested in. Um, because we wanted to use machine vision to count the number of pixels in, in the vertical axis, 
Uh, we used another widget to kind of rotate the image and make sure the water level was as, as horizontal as possible. Um, and, and, and here is the interesting part. Uh, we trained a custom machine learning model uh, using TensorFlow.js, uh, and then uh, we're doing a binary classification task. Um, again, this is something you can do within Kimo. Um, but what we, what we are doing with this model is detecting if my hand is in frame. Um, and, and the objective with this model is to get rid of those images uh, that had my hand there. Uh, you can see here that as my hand comes into frame, uh, the, the video feed in the next display widget basically stops and waits until my hand kind of goes out of frame. Um, after this, we just do a bit of image manipulation. Um, we just uh, trying to look for pixels that are orange in color and marking those in white and the rest of, of, of the pixels that don't fit that description, we just, we just mark them in, in, in black. So in that way, we are just basically getting rid of all, the, uh, all that information that we don't really need. And, and finally, we just draw a bounding box you know, around those white pixels and we extract the height of that bounding box to represent the, the, the water level that is basically what, what we are me measuring here. Um, you can see how, how, how important that little hand detection model is because if we bypass that step, our graph goes a bit crazy. And, and that's because uh, as I'm taking water out of the container, the liquid bounces uh, around a bit. And those perturbations in the water are also being captured and, and registered in the graph. So it gives us those very ugly spikes that, that don't really represent the real you know, uh, level of the water. So that ML model that is making a huge difference for us. Very interesting. Now, what I like about this is that um, you know, you've broken the problem down into many different parts. There's a bit of computer vision going on. There's the machine learning models being chained together and all this kind of stuff, right? So I feel like this could almost be an opportunity um, to kind of almost get people to challenge each other to make uh, optimal kind of flows of, of these things, just like they, they do on Kaggle. But this system would allow like, you know, anyone, no matter what their background, to actually have a chance of making something really powerful, right? So you know, maybe you want to use a segmentation model for the water and then uh, do something a little bit more advanced. Uh, it might be a little bit slower, but you can kind of compare results and see which one is accurate for different video types and make some competition. So I think there's a lot of potential here to make this into a really cool um, uh, system for people to use. So uh, I'm excited to right. see what you do there, <laughs> definitely. Um, yep. So I guess you know, this is really incredible work. And I, you know, I love how easy it is to use Kimu and bring an idea to life. But what were your biggest challenges in making this system? And you know, how did you land this final user experience that you created? Well, challenges a few. Um, uh, in particular, uh, making sure the ML part feeds seamlessly with the rest of the platform. So um, understanding the basics of ML was also a, a personal challenge that took a few weeks. Um, uh, regarding the user experience, um, I'll say that many years ago, uh, I worked uh, with a 3D uh, engine that used visual programming for the logic. So since then, I've been fascinated uh, with graphic programming. So I took up a lot of inspiration from that. But um, in line with what you just said as well, I'm, I'm a firm believer that uh, making technology in general available to everyone is very important. And coding is still a very scary thing for many people. So I think uh, these type of platforms make our industry a lot more inclusive. So when we decided to build this, we tried to make it as friendly as possible without necessarily limiting the kind of you know, things you could do with the platform. And, and the result is, is what you see here today. Totally. And I completely agree with that. I've had a lot of creative folk on the show in the past and people I've spoken to at events and things as well. And they've got a lot of great ideas, but they might not be as strong programmer as uh, most of the viewers on the TensorFlow channel, let's say. So um, it's great to see those people actually bring their ideas to life as well, because often they're really out there ideas that we've never seen before. And they're now able to create these things too. So I hope we see more of that in the future with tools like you've created. Right. Um, now, how can people try this out for themselves? I'm sure many people watching are very keen to give this a go. Uh, sure. Well, they can go to uh, our website, chemo.io, uh, and, and apply to get access to our public beta. Uh, beta. So chances are they're going to get a, a link to access the platform. Nice. And what type of time frame are we using for people tuning in in the future or the past, <laughs> depending when this airs? Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, we're expecting to go to public beta um, uh, early next year. But if you 
you know, watch this video and want to apply, go ahead. Uh, as I said, chances are you're going to get a, a access to the platform. Perfect. All right. Awesome. And um, I've got to ask at this point, I guess, what are your plans for the future? Is there anything that maybe the people watching could help you guys with um, and you know, make, it, make it even a better product than it is? Yes. Well, uh, as part of our roadmap, we are working hard on finishing our cloud offering. So right now, everything you just saw is happening in the browser. Uh, but there are many use cases in which you would want your programs to run in, in the cloud, right? So we're working hard to get that part uh, ready. Um, we are also looking for a lot of feedback, especially from enterprise customers. So if you are a company out there and you think uh, you could use this platform and would like to work with us, please do reach, uh, reach out. Um, uh, but also, I guess I would like to invite you know, everyone in general interested in, in using this this platform to go to the website and, and request access. Uh, you mentioned at the beginning about you know, uh, IoT and electronics. I've, uh, I have a background in electronics, so I've been a maker of my life. And I would love to see what, uh, to hear from others uh, how they would want to use this platform. So uh, go register and tell us what you would like to see and, and how you would like to, to use the platform. Excellent. And of course, we're going to put all the links in the description after the show. And I think this could be really important in like education as well. You can imagine like universities teaching or even high schools, uh, it'd be easy enough for students to use too. So that could be very interesting to see that develop. Uh, absolutely. Um, so thank you so much, Alex, for joining us today. And of course, for all the viewers watching, let us know what you think about Kimu in the comments. And of course, I'll see you next time. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, everyone. Bye.